Genesis 23. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirath Araba, that is, Hebron, in the land of the Canaan. And Abraham went in to, in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham rose up from before his dead and said to the Hittites, I am a sojourner and a foreigner among you. Give me property among you for a burying place that I may bury my dead out of my sight. The Hittites answered Abraham, Hear us, my lord. You are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will withhold from you his tomb to hinder you from burying your dead. Verse 7. Abraham rose and bowed to the Hittites, the people of the land, and he said to them, If you are willing that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me Ephron, the son of Zophar, that he may give me the cave of Mephela, which he owns. It is at the end of his field. For the full price, let him give it to me in your presence as a property for a burying place. Now Ephron was sitting among the Hittites, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites, of who all went at the gate of his city. No, my lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the sight of the sons of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and said to Ephron, in the hearing of the people of the land. But if you will hear me, I will give you the price of a field. Accept it from me, that I may bury my dead there. Verse 14. Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, listen to me. A piece of land worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the silver that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the weight's current among the merchants. So the field of Ephron in Machpelah, which was to the east of Mamre, the field of the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field throughout its whole area was made over, to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the Hittites before all who went in at the gate of the city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah, east of Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field and the cave that is in it were made over to Abraham as property for a burying place for the Hittites. So we are using our soap method again. I just want to reiterate this in today. We first of all start with the acronym SOAP. We start with Scripture. We started our podcast with Scripture. Next we're going to move into O, the observation, observing Thing, lessons from the context and what the context and what the text of Scripture says. And then we kind of simultaneously at times observe and apply. Observe what the text says, but also how can this apply to my life? And sometimes those occur simultaneously. Sometimes they're very distinct. And then we close in prayer. And we may not always end in prayer on the podcast, but hopefully you are praying after you hear the Word of God. And that may not mean that you bow your head, close your eyes, and follow some certain method of prayer, but that your heart lifts up to God, and that in your heart you are crying out and asking the Lord, desiring and seeking Him to make His Scripture true in your life and to transform you by His Spirit. Prayer is more than just the words we say. For Scripture teaches us that Hannah, the mother of Samuel, prayed, but she had no words coming out of her mouth. We can pray in our hearts silently to the Lord. And so it is more about our hearts seeking God. Prayer is more about that than just words that we say. If we're merely saying mere words, we're missing the attitude and the heart behind prayer, which is focusing and yielding to the Lord. Okay, so with that kind of tangent and, and also reiteration of our method of study, let us look here at Genesis chapter 23 and observe some things and apply some lessons to our life, Lord willing. We first of all see that Sarah lived 127 years. That's quite a long life. And when she died, she died in Kerabeth Araba, which is Hebron. Now, Hebron is a very important place. Um, it is the place where Caleb seizes a mountain when they go into the promised land. At 80 years old, he seizes that mountain. It is the place where King David will reign for the first seven years of his uh, kingship. He is not king over all Israel his entire reign. For 33 years, he is king over all of Israel. 
his complete reign was 40 years, but the first seven he reigned in Hebron over only a portion of the land. And there was war between the house of David and Saul, Saul's descendants, uh, for those seven years. So we see that important place. We also see here the Hittites. Now the Hittites are a people that puzzled scholars and especially skeptics of the Bible for a long time because for many years we had no uh, archaeological proof of the Hittites and where they were because they, they basically um, disappear off the face of the map. They were wiped out and assimilated into other nations for the most part is, is kind of the best explanation in, in summary. You can look up and learn about this fearsome nation that was a world power and a, a formidable power in the Middle East at one point in history. So these are the people upon among which Abraham is living. Now, it is interesting that in this entire interchange, you know, Abraham multiple times rises up and he goes to them and he says, please, let me bury him. And they're like, you can have whatever you want. You're like a prince of God among us. And Now, notice the fact Abraham had a great testimony amongst these ungodly people. These were not Christians. These were not God followers. The Hittites were a pagan people. And yet they regarded Abraham as a prince of God. They, they regarded him as beloved of God. And they had a great honor and respect for him. They wanted to just give him the place he wanted to bury Sarah. That's not that big of a place, honestly. I mean, a burial plot? Come on. It's not that big. And Abraham asked specifically for a specific place, a cave. Caves were a, a common place of burial. Another thing that is kind of different is that in Christian history and in Jewish history, uh, Christians and Jews have, throughout history, buried their dead. And this is kind of a, a tangent and kind of a question sometimes people have. Why don't Christians cremate or whatever? Well, number one, the Bible never specifically says that, oh, if you cremate, you, you won't end up in heaven because you have no body that can be raised from the dead. There are people out there that teach that false doctrine, and that's why I kind of want to make note of it here. But that is nowhere mentioned in Scripture. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When the Lord returns, and He raises up those dead bodies to meet Him in the air of His beloved, and, and, he, and he takes the, the bodies of the unbeliever and, and takes them out of the sea and out of the earth and throws them into eternal torment. At that time, you know, certainly there are people who have drowned in the ocean millennia ago and their entire bodies and skeletons have withered away. You, you don't have to uh, physically be there. Dust we are and to dust we return. So I, I don't think cremation versus burial is the biggest issue here. But there is something about burial. There, there is a reverence for the body uh, that is recognized by believers and Jews, recognizing that the body is sleeping for the most part, though, pagan cultures do not do that. They have often burned their dead or have some type of uh, demonic ritual along with the burial process. The, the Egyptians, while they did embalm the body, were heavily superstitious. They uh, performed mass uh, execution, really, forcing slaves to take their own lives and even killing the wives of their their kings so that they could be with them in the afterlife. It was a very pagan and dark ritual. But Abraham simply desires a place to bury his beloved wife Sarah, who has lived to 127 years. So it's also interesting to note she was 90, right, when, Ab when Isaac was born. And so now she is 127. She lived until her son was 37 years old. And that's kind of interesting because we're going to notice another thing about Isaac's age in, in chapter 24. So kind of bear that in mind for uh, next time. But nonetheless, we see Abraham seek this. And there's this constant interchange between the people and Abraham. He asks them to go to Ephron and to ask for this cave in, in Mamre. And they do. And they ask for it. And he, he asks the price in the presence of all of them at the gates of this city where he is at the gate of this place and hearing of the Hittites. And he weighs out the money, he pays him, and he buries Sarah, and he, he mourns for her. And so these are the lessons that we see here. Primarily, it's a straightforward account. Um, Abraham had a great testimony amongst the people that he lived. He, he did the right thing in the hearing of the people. He, he did not let there be any, you know, well, yeah, go talk to Ephron over there. He's at his farm, you know, and, and go off and... Let there be rumor of whether or not Abraham got a deal or got it for free. No, 
he, he does them in the hearing of all. And so I think a lesson that we can honestly learn and apply from this to our own lives is, you know, what is our testimony with the world? Hopefully we have the favor of the Lord with them, but if we do not have the favor of God, are we still dealing justly? Are we making sure that our affairs and nothing is underhand or hidden or, or causing possible reproach or questioning upon the way that we're dealing? Because we do live by a higher standard. The way we conduct ourselves in this world, brothers and sisters, brings attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray that the, the uh, account here, the narrative of Abraham and the way he buried his dead, Father, I pray that it would be uh, an encouragement to us. I pray, Lord, the application to our lives of, of being above reproach um, in the way that we live in this world. Lord, I pray we would apply that. And I pray, Lord, uh, for the theological um, you know, application here even of, of burying our, our dead. It seems to be the pattern very clearly in Scripture. But at the same time, Father, guard us from those out there who teach completely unbiblical doctrine that if we do not bury our our loved ones, if they are cremated or something, that they cease to exist as a soul in eternity. What a what an unbiblical doctrine. I pray, Lord, we would ground our practices and our choices in Scripture, but that we also be careful against such ludicrous conclusions that the Scripture does not teach. Father, I pray in all things that if there was anything said that was not helpful, Father, today for someone listening, that those things would drop to the side, but Holy Spirit, that you would take your word and that you would encourage hearts and souls of believers today, I pray, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.